To me, there's so much more in life than one thing, two things, ten things, a hundred things. Basketball has been most of my life, but at the same time, my interest goes beyond basketball. Born and raised in Barcelona, Spain, 30-year-old Lakers power forward Pau Gasol is the NBA's renaissance man. The seven-footer is as comfortable running the triangle offense with Kobe Bryant as he is discussing opera with renowned tenor Placido Domingo or relaxing at the piano after a game. Usually when I play, it's when I'm tired or worn out mentally and I just sit down and enjoy a good time with, with the piano, you know, just away from the world. Pau is as graceful a person as I know. He's very comfortable, I think, in his own skin. He's a well-rounded person. He's just so well-mannered, so polite, you know, he's just genuinely just a nice guy. You know how uh, players kind of take on the, the persona of their city. What makes you a Barcelona guy? Uh, very laid back, very modern, very cosmopolitan, very open, very international. I think he's got a great taste and it's open minded like I am. While he plays more than 6,000 miles from his homeland, Gasol has become an icon in a country rapidly falling in love with basketball and is one of Spain's most sought after pitchmen. Apunta bien, tío. Sobre todo quieto, sobre todo quieto. Pau is one of the great sportsmen of, of Spain and the first to go to NBA and really win you know, and be a big superstar. Put in perspective for me how popular he is here. He's a rock star. He's like, I don't know, he's a rock star now. In a country where soccer is practically religion, young Gasol had to look abroad to find his basketball heroes. My idol when I was growing up was Michael, Michael Jordan. Uh, MJ was, you know, the guy that I admired the most. Describe how into the NBA you were as a kid. I was into it more right after the Dream Team. Gasol was 12 years old when the Dream Team came to Barcelona for the 1992 Summer Olympics. I started buying the NBA magazines, I started, started hanging out, all the posters in my room, buying jerseys. I had Magic, I had Larry, I had Michael. So did you ever think that you could be that guy on the poster for no. some little kid? I never even dream about it. It's just uh, another planet, yeah, something unreachable. With the NBA a distant dream, Gasol focused on more traditional pursuits. I was competitive also at school, like I wanted to get, you know, the best grades and, uh, you know, to me it was a good feeling to compete against the smartest guys in school. Even though I was doing music, I was doing basketball after school, I was still competitive in class. Gasol is remembered by his former teachers as the youngster they jokingly called Pequeñin or Tiny. They still keep a memento of his time there. My, my knees wouldn't fit here, right? So I would be always be playing like this. I would always be playing like this and, you know, making noises and all that, right? So it was uncomfortable for me uh, at a certain point. So I, was, I, was, I told them, is there something we can do? They just uh, added up a piece. See, as you can see here. Oh, okay. They just added up this, this much. So this is more my size. And this is more my speed. There you go. The son of a doctor and a hospital administrator, Gasol initially wanted to follow in his parents' footsteps. As an 18-year-old, he enrolled in medical school at the University of Barcelona. At the same time, his basketball skills were blossoming. And in 1999, he signed with EuroLeague basketball giant FC Barcelona for more than $100,000 a year. How did you do both? Well, it was, it was hard, but it, it was so demanding. I didn't have any personal life whatsoever. So I was just dedicated to play and study, just play and study. What was your favorite? I like to go into the lab and actually work on bodies. It was just so fascinating to see where we actually are inside 
And what will we become? Those people that were laying there, they had a life, they had a family. It's cold. It's a cruel reality. So you'd be working on cadavers in the morning, mm -hmm. then go to practice and yep. play ball at night. Mm -hmm. Yep, for the most part. Next day? Do it all over again. Yeah, so it was, it was intense, but it really made me grow really quick. How'd you sit in these desks? <laughs> I always sat in the back. That's why I always have such a hard time when I go to the opera. I always, I'm always like sitting. I always feel so bad for the guy behind me. So I'm always like trying to slide like this to so give him better view. So you always sat in the back row? Yeah, I did. That's mm. very thoughtful. I try to be thoughtful. Gasol's empathy is not limited to fellow opera patrons. He spends part of his off seasons working as an ambassador for UNICEF. This past summer, he traveled to Ethiopia to help fight childhood malnutrition. I think to have that impact on people is such a beautiful thing. I'm so thankful that uh, basketball has, has given me a chance to experience so many things. Gasol's game on the court is as varied as his life is off of it. A renaissance man on the hardwood as well. Fundamentally, he has no weakness. He can shoot the ball, he can handle the ball, he can pass the ball. And he can defend, he can block shots, he can steal, he can move his feet. The ability to take the ball off the rebound, push it the length of the court, go between the legs, make a decision. Despite his array of skills, Gasol has spent his entire career fighting the perception that he lacks toughness. It's a label that's been with him since he was drafted third overall in 2001, through his six plus years with the Memphis Grizzlies, and even after being traded to the Lakers in 2008. He does not like to be called soft. Hates it. That stuff gets under his skin. It pisses me off and uh, it touches my insides a little bit. I'm a sensitive person. In what way? You know, certain things affect me more than they should. Do you think it's sensitive? Yes. He says you tease him a lot. A lot. So for example, how would he tease you? Yeah, he's just teasing in a serious, condescending, funny, ironic way. I walk him into the weight room once in a while and tell him this is where we gain some weight and some strength. He handles it well. I mean, he's not, you know, I'm, when we say he's sensitive, you know, when people think like he's, you know, you tease him, he's, you know, crying with his hands, it's, you know, that's, that's not it at all. The criticism of Gasol's toughness peaked during the 2008 NBA Finals against the Celtics. Gasol was pushed around in the decisive game six, turning the ball over five times in the Lakers' humiliating 39-point loss. The next preseason I came in, you know, um, dedicated myself more to the weight room. I was committed to getting ready, not just for the regular season, but for the finals. The hard work paid off. Since the 08 Finals loss, Gasol has made two All-Star teams and won two championship rings. In Game 7 of the 2010 Finals, also against the Celtics, Gasol shed the soft label for good, finishing with 19 points and 18 rebounds. How was he different in this year's Finals than in 08 against the Celtics? I think, I think he was more confident. When he steps out there on the floor, he believes he's the best low post player in the league. Whether he's in Los Angeles, Barcelona, or any other corner of the globe, Pau Gasol doesn't believe in boundaries. Basketball is his job and his passion, but the world is his court. In basketball, my career will, is limited, and I'll play until who knows when. But after that, I still want to be able to do a lot of other things. I don't like to be in a little box or in a bigger box. I just like to be open. 